Um, so we're going to begin tonight uh, starting off with our extracurricular, our athletic and extracurricular safety plan phase two, um, given that um, beginning next Monday, um, per the PIAA, heat acclimation will begin um, for our football team. Uh, and then beginning on August 17th, um, the varsity and university levels will begin. So I'm going to have Dr. Polonis come up uh, and we'll walk through um, any updates from phase one to phase two, and then we'll open it up for questions uh, in between each section. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Bermersky. And uh, I want to thank the board for the opportunity to uh, present phase two of the Athletics Health and Safety Plan uh, back on June 23rd. Uh, I presented and you approved phase one, uh, which was required by the state to get our, our student athletes in our, in our band uh, back on campus. Uh, and we did that on July 1. And over the last five weeks, uh, we've had uh, a great experience with having students back on campus. Uh, it's been very positive. It's been great to to see the, the students and coaches on campus working together uh, in preparation for the fall season. So, so this is an extension of that plan that you approved uh, back in June. And uh, there's, in, in some ways it overlaps, it's very similar, but in some ways there's some areas uh, where it does differentiate because we are now getting into the mandatory PIAA season and the marching band season that is required uh, from the marching band uh, staff. Uh, if, if you take a look at the table of contents there, uh, just we, we uh, Mr. Bermersky and I, we, we tried to align it with the overall uh, plan, return to school plan that the state uh, requires, and we use the same format. I, I, I'm not gonna hit on every slide here. If you have any questions, please let me know, but I'm gonna try to point out some of the key points. So as far as the introduction goes, one, one of the most difficult things uh, that myself and other athletic directors have faced is we're, we're taking directives and guidance from uh, multiple organizations. In this case, as we put together this plan and we look to implement uh, return to play and return to compete, uh, we have to take direction from Governor Wolf's office, from the CDC, uh, from the Pennsylvania Department of Health, from the National Federation, from the PIAA, and from the Lancaster Lebanon League. So we're, we're getting all these sources inputting on what we have to do, and then we have to develop a plan that meets all of these, all these criteria and requirements. So, so I just want you to be aware, that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, procedures, protocols, and policies in the plan, uh, our, our design is to minimize the risk of spread of COVID-19. And that's our goal, is to have put the students and our staff in a safe environment where we're minimizing the risk. And this may adjust as we move through the fall season. Uh, as, as we'll talk about, there some, uh, the Lancaster Lebanon League is actually meeting tomorrow morning. And they might have, make some decisions uh, that may impact this plan. But we, we need to move forward with our plan. We need board approval uh, so that we can uh, start to prepare for students to, to return to play. On the next slide, the, the last <laughs> governance that we've received and guidance we received from the PIAA, and, and I'm not going to read it, but it's basically saying that we as a school district and you as a school board, you have the latitude to decide when you want to start the fall season. And you can't start before the PIAA date, which is August 10th for football, August 17th for our senior high sports. But if a school district wants to delay, they're giving schools that flexibility. So I just want to make sure that, that you're aware that that's the last uh, guidance we've received from the PIAA, and that was last Wednesday. Okay. As far as on campus, a marching band started yesterday, uh, which is typical first week in August uh, for Mr. Saracini and, and, and his staff and the band members. Uh, senior high uh, football heat acclimation will be next Monday, or this Monday coming up, which will be August 10th. Uh, the senior high uh, sports in the 17th, and then the junior high sports on the 24th. Uh, there, in there, I, I will add that there's a current proposal right now before the Lancaster Lebanon League to move the junior high start date to September 8th, till after Labor Day. And that is part of the one of many items that I believe is going to be proposed tomorrow at the Lancaster Lebanon League meeting. So, okay. the, the, the sections of the required plan, uh, some of these, as I said, are very similar to what you approved back in June. 
Uh, the cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, and ventilation part is very similar in the protocols. Uh, it has been a team effort between the custodial staff and the extracurricular staff during the last five weeks. Uh, the, the biggest difference will be that starting now, we're going to have a lot more students on campus. Uh, so the custodial staff and the extracurricular staff will need to be uh, diligent in making sure uh, that things are being clean and sanitized and disinfected. Uh, and, and that, with, with having more students on campus, we'll have to be even more diligent with that. So, okay. Uh, the third section of the plan is social distancing and other safety protocols. Uh, this, in some ways, the, our plan here is very similar to what you approved in June, but there's also, uh, there, there's also some differences. And now we're gonna be looking at, at Competing, uh, we'll be looking at a limit of 25 uh, people that are allowed in a gymnasium, uh, 250 people that are allowed uh, in an outdoor venue. And we're looking to have athletic events and holding athletic events. So the plan will work on how we're going to accommodate those standards that are given to us uh, and, and how we're gonna accommodate those standards. Uh, the best way to say it is that and, and I was on a webinar with Mark Byers from the PIAA, and, and he said that in between the lines, on the playing surface, it's gonna be business as usual. However, off the playing surface, it won't be business as usual. Uh, we'll have social distancing, uh, we'll have making sure um, that, that we're sanitizing, making sure that students are safe, uh, making sure that if there isn't social distancing, students are wearing masks and face coverings. Uh, coaches will be wearing face coverings. So in that regard, it won't be the same. Uh, the Lancaster Lebanon League is looking at not having, uh, at football games, not having visiting cheerleaders and visiting marching band come to the games uh, to help hit that 250 person limit in the stadium. So in between the lines of play, business as usual, outside there's going to be some changes. The, as far as the social distance, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so, so the spectator guidelines is an issue that, that has received uh, quite a bit of discussion. And what I put there in italics is what uh, the, the directive we have right now uh, from the governor, uh, that, that sports-related activities, uh, school sports-related activities are limited to student athletes, coaches, officials, and staff only. Uh, it says the addition of visitors and spectators will be contingent upon future health conditions within the state and local community. So right now, uh, they're not permitting, the governor's not permitting spectators at athletic events. So that, that's a change. Uh, in response to that, uh, the administration is working on uh, live streaming of varsity athletic events. Uh, that, that's something we're collecting data on right now. We're, we're figuring out our different options. Uh, and, and as administration, we believe strongly that if there are not spectators, we as a district need to provide live, live streaming uh, so that the classmates can watch their other classmates and support and parents and grandparents can watch their, their children compete. So that, that would fall on us to, uh, to try to figure out how we were going to do that. Uh, then the next slide uh, is just a graphic on, on how, and I'm going to use football for an example of how a football game would look. As I said, in the middle of the field, business as usual. Uh, but in, in the stands, on the visiting side, no spectators, uh, no visiting band, no cheerleaders. Uh, the players, coaches, athletic trainers, chain gang, uh, whoever's on the sideline will have to stay socially distanced. Uh, and then on the home side, uh, there will be uh, more, the, the band will be permitted, cheerleaders will be permitted. Uh, mm. Also, we'll look at not, not selling concessions and there would be a 250 person limit in the stadium. So it's gonna look different. Uh, as far as the next slide, uh, one, of, one of the concerns is how will girls volleyball be handled? Uh, at Hitfield, we have a, a, an excellent tradition, a strong tradition with boys and girls volleyball. As we're entering into the girls volleyball season, the current ruling is only 25 people are allowed in the gym. Uh, that's going to limit roster size, game help, officials, uh, and then eliminating spectators. Uh, one of the things that the PIAA did release last Wednesday is what they called return to competition guidelines. And they, they, they actually they did a nice job breaking down each sport and just giving um, guidance as far as ways uh, that 
school administration and athletic directors and game help and coaches can, uh, can deliver the sport in a way that is COVID, um, you know, reduces the spread of COVID. So what I just did, and instead of including the, the whole 30-page uh, packet, is th these are some of the guidelines. I'm just using girls' volleyball as an example uh, as far as what they're recommending as far as girls' volleyball. And they've done this for every sport. All right, next slide. As far as monitoring student and staff health, there's, there's not a whole lot of changes uh, from what we're currently doing. Uh, in the return to play phase one, uh, we, in our plan that you approved, we had COVID screenings. Uh, we have uh, training uh, for, for our, our coaches and our extracurricular staff. Uh, we, we have protocols uh, to follow. Uh, as far as uh, screening and uh, the, the staff and the student athletes. So what I did is um, Mr. Bromerski had some of these slides that he'll be using as far as how he'll be doing symptom screening during the school day and, uh, and COVID-19 symptoms, symptom screening, which is the next slide. And so we're, we'll be doing the same thing out on the athletic field and, and, on the ex and with the marching band. We'll be using the same uh, protocols and policies as we would be during the school day. Uh, next slide, and then the next slide, please. Uh, once again, I, I think uh, last week, uh, Mr. Bermersky showed this slide, and this is as far as primary contacts and social distancing. Uh, once again, we'll be implementing this, uh, as these are the current standards, the current guidelines, we'll be implementing this also on the athletic field and with the marching band. The next slide, and with contact tracing, if, if we do have a case, uh, our suspected case, uh, we will use the contact tracing that uh, Mr. Bermersky has been working with with the county agencies. Uh, we will, we will, it, it's a student at Hempfield, it's a Hempfield employee, it's just on the extracurricular side, so we'll be using the same, <coughs> the, the same process and, and protocols. Uh, section five, under other consideration for staff and students, uh, we, we want to, we want to provide a caring and supportive uh, environment for both the students and staff. Uh, so for the staff, if an extracurricular staff uh, member uh, presents a medical concern, uh, we as administration will make every effort to, to accommodate that concern. And the same with students. Uh, if students and extracurricular staff are at higher risk, uh, they'll work with our uh, school district nurses and athletic trainers who help a personal plan uh, that will guide their participation. And for our extracurricular staff, if we have students that have a reluctancy or concern regarding their participation in an extracurricular activity, our coaches uh, and, and our marching band staff will work to develop a plan to accommodate them. We, we want to be very sensitive that, that this, is, this is an environment where people can, can have concerns, uh, where, where there can be some angst, and, uh, and, and we as a staff want to support our, our staff and our students. Okay. Uh, section five or section six, the uh, health and safety plan uh, for professional development. Uh, so as far as professional development, uh, these are the same uh, protocols and, and policies and procedures that we followed uh, to get everybody out on, on July 1st. Uh, I, I review uh, the, the plan that you approved on, on June 23rd. I personally reviewed them with the coaching staff. Uh, made sure that they understood and the expectations. Uh, we also had some training uh, videos that we had them go through. Uh, Safe Schools had a really nice COVID awareness uh, training video. Uh, and we also had the staff do some really basic videos just on hand washing, disinfecting, sanitizing, uh, preventing the spread of COVID. Uh, just so everybody was on the same page. Everybody was starting at the same place and everybody understands the expectations we have. Um, we also provide checklists uh, as far as leading up to having the practices. And then we have a checklist for what extracurricular staff should do the day they hold workouts and practices. And then section seven, uh, just a communication of the plan. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, as the director of athletics, I, I will meet with all the extracurricular staff. Uh, we, as I said before, we, we've kind of adapt, adopted a uh, marching band into the athletic program. So uh, Matt Saracini and his staff have been great to work with. Uh, 
We also, uh, it's required that to be posted on the Hempfield School District website uh, once the plan is approved. Uh, we also put it on the athletic department website. Uh, coaches will put it on their Schoology pages, uh, as well as the marching band will put it on their Schoology page. Uh, we put it out on the, uh, the Hempfield Athletics Twitter account. And the coaches and the marching band is that we have parent meetings. Uh, the coaches will be addressing the health and safety plan so parents are aware of, of some of the contents of it and where they can read it if they want to read it in full. So that's, uh, that, that's a brief overview of, of where we're at and, and what we're proposing. Uh, you have uh, access to the complete document, which is uh, in excess of 40 pages long. Uh, and uh, I, I hope that you have an opportunity to look through it. And if you have questions, uh, please let me know. I have a question. Yeah. How do you have a parent meeting when you can only have 25 people, or will you just have repeat meetings? No, actually what our coaches do, we're going to hold them in the stadium. We, we put them in the bleachers, spread them out in the okay. bleachers, and yeah, so that's that's the plan. Uh, football is having theirs that's next a, week. They'll be the first okay. one to have them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, uh, you talked about uh, training of the extracurricular staff and the standards. Is there going to be a standard thing that each coach will go through all the athletes with about protocols and things that they need to do as athletes to be careful? Is there going to be any kind of standard training? Because I see there could be a lot of variability from sport to sport, sure. coach to coach. Is there going to be anything like that rolled out that the athlete, because I think that's important too. No, that's a good point. One thing I didn't mention is we do have a, uh, we do have a participation form, which, which you approved uh, on, on June 23rd, right. uh, which, which informs the parents and students of, of what we're doing. And we, we, we've adjusted that a little bit. And, and we have in there that the parents also need to have responsibility for the monitoring the health of their children. And we're counting on that. Uh, as we as they come in with the COVID screenings, um, you know every Mr. Mayor said every sport's a little different. Understood. And and so, but but I, I think what you're saying uh, to maybe have some standard procedures is something that would be good to develop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the bottom line is the coaches. We want to make sure they're doing, even though each sport's different, they're doing similar things, and all the athletes are getting the same message. So one sport's more careless than another sport. We want to try to make sure all the athletes understand sure. what they should and should not be doing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, golf is much different than football. You know, they're, sure. both, they're both fall sports. So, I mean, that would look different. But basically hand washing and sanitizing and not sharing water bottles, you know, those things are all similar for, for all sports. The other piece that we have found through um, the summer experience is that our coaching staff have taken this very seriously. Um, and so they have been working hard to adhere to everything that Dr. Polonis has reviewed okay. with them yeah. um, because they know that if it's not followed, the season could be over uh, at the same time. And so um, everything that we've seen from the monitoring side that Dr. Polonis has been reporting is that they have been adhering to everything that has been rolled out. Um, and as Dr. Polonis has been getting around to the sporting events, that is something he is watching for is to make sure that that is happening. Yeah. And I'll take that a step further. The, the, student, the students are taking it very seriously, too. I mean, the, the students want to be out here. Our, our participation rate for out-of-season workouts is much higher than it is generally. I mean, we, we ha we're having a lot of students that want to be involved and uh, a lot more than usual. And, and they're taking it very seriously. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not seeing coaches having to repeat, uh, you know, instructions to, to the student athletes, uh, you know. They, you know, they're doing what's expected of them because they know that this is a privilege and they want to be out here. Excellent. Yeah. Dr. Polonis, if I might follow up on that, I think that's an, an outstanding point um, and perhaps could inform some of the discussions that we'll be having later about reopening of the schools more generally. Um, so it's your sense that the students, the student athletes are taking this very seriously and sort of feel a need to not screw it up, so to speak. I do, yes. Okay. That, that, that's very good to hear. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and that's ev evidence from conversations with coaches and my own observations as I'm out, you know, walking around, uh, observing the coaches and what they're doing with their out of season workouts. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Dr. Polonis, this, this is just a point of clarification. The 250 maximum, they actually use the verbiage 250 for the stadium, or is that an assumption? I, I, 
What, what I'm taking it as, uh, Mr. Bard, is 250 at an outdoor event. That's correct. So my question would be like other activities like Hershey Park and all those, they're obviously not only allowing 250 people in there. Correct. Um, so Penn this- State's football stadium is not allowing only 250 people. And, and I'm not criticizing our plan. I'm just clarifying that has the stadium been listed as one 250 person unit or potentially four? For um, an event outside of, in a school setting, we must adhere to what was released of the 250 individuals in an outdoor event. Um, back on July 15th, when Governor Wolf um, indicated the new mitigation orders regarding indoor and outdoor gatherings of 25 and 250, uh, respectively, um, I submitted a question to the Department of Education um, questioning whether or not it applied to schools, uh, because at that time, um, it, there was no indication that it did. It was just a general statement. Um, on July 20th in the evening, I received notification from the Department of Education that it did not apply to schools and it only applied to food and retail. However, then um, within a day or two, we received another clarification that it indeed did apply to schools. And so we, we have the order and that any um, school activities that are non uh, that are not related to educational instruction must adhere to the 25250. Uh, and that includes sporting events, meetings, uh, assemblies, et cetera. Uh, and that was outlined um, by the Department of Ed through the governor's office. Jen Wedig, our athletic trainer, is on the Zoom call as well. She was I, I understand that that's being discussed tomorrow, actually. It, I'm hearing the same thing. Um, and But at this point, that is all we have to go off of based on the most recent order from the Department of Ed and the Governor. Yeah, the, the meeting tomorrow, Steve, um, the LL meeting, can you, I guess, say what's gonna go on there? Is it all the athletic directors get together and discuss all the issues, make decisions on uh, what this is gonna look like in the fall, or is there a governing board of the LL? I forgive my ignorance on that. Yeah, yeah, the, there is a governance board. It's called the Board of Control. It's made up of a committee of superintendents, high school principals, and athletic directors. Uh, so. This is not this is not the athletic directors making the decision. It's it's the formal decision making governance body of the Lancaster Lebanon League. Uh, I honestly am not I'm not I don't know everything that's going to be voted on. I'm not sure if anybody knows at this point. It might be getting together, them discussing it right there, and then you know then voting on it. I, I know that the junior high moving the junior high back to after Labor Day that was that was a recommendation that was going to be discussed at the meeting tomorrow. Uh, the other, another one was roster limits, uh, particularly for away teams. So to, to minimize the number of students uh, and, and people that are in, that go to, let's say, a soccer game, a field hockey game, a volleyball game, uh, the league is looking at imposing some roster limits so that the entire team doesn't travel uh, and that there's less people then uh, to minimize the spread of COVID. In terms of that meeting tomorrow, it's my understanding that there is going to be discussion regarding delaying all athletic um, sporting events and contests until after Labor Day for all levels. Uh, and whether it's you know, senior, and um, varsity, junior varsity, junior high, um, and then that is being, my understanding, being discussed tomorrow. And the individuals that vote on that through the Board of Controls, um, I believe it's the high school principal that actually has the authority under their governance to actually cast those votes. Um, and in our conversations here in the district, um, we do not believe that delaying the start of the season um, would make sense at this point. Um, we believe that the students have been practicing, they've been engaging, and if the decision needs to be made to postpone all sports, and that, that should be the decision. Delaying at this point when we have not had individual cases from our district side, uh, things popping up from a concern, uh, we want our students to be able to engage in that activity in a safe manner based on everything that's been outlined. Um, and so at this time, um, you know, we as a district don't feel that there should be a delay but there are other, other districts that do. And so as they are making those decisions, um, I believe it's, I've never been part of this, so I believe it's majority. It is, is that majority, correct? yes. Um, that will make that decision. Uh, but our teams uh, want to get started. Our coaches and players want to get started. Remember, this is a voluntary piece. No one is required to do this. Um, and so 
our students who want to play should be given that opportunity in our opinion uh, and we have to then finalize some of the additional information um, we'll see what we get from the state tomorrow um, but at this time you know that that's my knowledge of what will occur tomorrow uh, i believe that meeting and, and vote potentially is at 8 a.m right. thank you for that color appreciate it a couple more questions um, you said was it the state or the piaa said no fans could that change if things went well in the coming months but right now there's no fans that 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 was the statement that i had uh, up on the screen from the governor okay and and it did in the statement it did say that if things improved that, that may change second question and maybe this we don't know but if things get bad again and we close the schools this that, that, that so they become virtual and no in person does that also mean athletics would stop athletic events and participation would stop yeah it, it's interesting because um the state of Kentucky, uh, their state association, even though the state's going online, they're, they're still planning on having athletics. Uh, the city of Atlanta, the whole entire city of Atlanta is uh, going online, but they're still having athletics. Uh, you, know, it, you can state a compelling case to, ha to have athletics. So it's voluntary, uh, it's, except for girls volleyball, it's outside. Uh, you know, these things are much different than, it, it's not part of fate. It's not part of the, the required education that we need to deliver. Uh, and it can be done in smaller, what we call pods. It, it can, you can really break down, uh, you know, some of the things you're doing athletically into small group instruction. So, so I think you could state a compelling case for uh, having athletics, uh, even though schools online. You know, I think you have to take a look at the mental and social, emotional well-being of students. Uh, and and you know my my experience over the last five weeks here is students want to be here. They want to be around people. They and 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 they they need that. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know if the governing bodies would permit that or not. I mean, that's yet to be seen. Of course, that's a hypothetical, and hopefully sure. we don't go there. So I'm, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm just thinking out loud. But as a board, we do need direction uh, in terms of whether there is support for Hempfield athletics and extracurriculars to basically resume with the phase two, uh, or you know, should that be delayed? Um, so we do, we, would, we do need some guidance there this evening um, from the board. I have, I have a question before we go to the, sure. to the question, um, to the vote, I guess, or approval. You mentioned live streaming, which mm -hmm. I think is a great idea. Yeah. Which teams are you talking about? Well, we, it, you, you know, the, we would try to live stream the sports we can. I, I'm not so sure golf would lend itself well, to live stream. Yeah, that was uh, But <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, would, I would venture to say we would try to get as many varsity sports as we can. We would try to make sure we're in compliance with Title IX, you know, to make sure that we're not discriminating against, you know, one sort of sport versus you know, another, particularly on the gender side. Uh, but it's, it's something to, it takes, it takes manpower. Uh, uh, Huddle, uh, which, is a, which is a video archiving uh, service that we use, uh, they, they have a remote control camera inside that you can mount inside and it's, it's hands-free. Uh, you, you start having some motion down on the court and it starts recording and it'll upload it straight to YouTube. So we're looking at that option. Uh, but there's a cost involved with that. Uh, Do you have an estimated cost at all? Yeah, for, for, the, for, the huddle, for the huddle camera inside and their outside camera is in beta right now and it won't be ready till the spring, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but their inside camera uh, would cost us additional $3,000 uh, for the year onto our normal huddle subscription. So, okay. Yeah. And you said only varsity, so no um, junior high, middle school teams? Yeah, well, I, I think we're going to have limited resources. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, it takes people to man that, and it mm -hmm. takes people to make sure that, that things get uploaded. I, I think we would focus, my recommendation would be to focus on the varsity sports. A, a couple questions. Yeah. Okay, so for, for starters, you mentioned about the governing bodies, um, you know, Governor Wolf's office, the CDC. So, so ultimately, who, who trumps the other? I mean, what's the pecking order of importance of their guideline and opinion? Yeah. I, I honestly, Mr. Smiley, I honestly yeah. don't know as far as the pecking order. So we, I would think the governor's office, yep. that, that would be my initial reaction, but I, I don't know. So as we look at this from a school standpoint, <clears throat> on the athletic side, we have the, the governing board, uh, the board of controls over the LL League. 
Um, then we have the PIAA. Um, and then we have the Department of Health and the governor. Uh, the Department of Education does not oversee athletics and extracurriculars. Um, so that would shift to, um, you know, at the governmental level there, beyond the PIAA, it's the Department of Health and the governor's office. Um, so if they come out and say no sports, no sports. Uh, if they say we can, you know, have to follow certain orders, then that's what we need to follow uh, in order to move forward with that. Okay. So, so you know people are gonna find loopholes so I, I'm picturing a football game with everybody standing outside the fence, lining the whole place around there. Technically, they're not in the event. You know what's going to happen. Um, how are you going to handle that? Yeah, uh, I, I think that would be um, that 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 would be something that I would seek direction from the administration and the board on. I mean, I think that's a decision that would affect the entire community. So I, I and and you're right. I mean, that's there, there's a lot of situations here that uh, that we could probably go one way or the other with. So, um, you know, the same, the same with volleyball. I mean, there's, you know, you know one, one, of, one, of the, one of the topics is we, we have two dividers in our gym. We can divide our gym into thirds. You know, the, the, the discussion amongst athletic directors is if we bring those dividers down, can we now have 75 in the gym? I mean, does that, does that create three spaces now instead of one space? Uh, so, I mean, these are all areas that, that we're going to have to work through. Uh, Mr. Smiley, there, there's, there's no manual for this. I mean, we're, we're just kind of working our way through it. Thank you. <laughs> and it puts the school districts in a really difficult position, um, you know, to have to make these, when, when some of these directives come out uh, and then, you know, no spectators um, at sporting events. I, your, your question is very fair. You know, we have an open campus, you know, people walking around, people stopping, people looking, people walking. Like, do we go up and say, I'm sorry, you can't be here? Um, you know, we don't have the staff um, to do that. Our staff's going to be needing to be there with our students, you know, monitoring, coaching. You know, now you're recording, now live streaming. Um, and so it, what's, what's interesting is, you know, a, a quote that was in an article where it says school governing boards and administrators will determine if school buildings reopen and if classes resume remotely or a combination of the two. Uh, this is from the governor and the best way to find out these decisions is to contact your school governing board or administration. And so we're getting at times some mixed messages of we, yes, we want direction and we want directives, but then follow it up with the subsequent and necessary information. Uh, and so in this particular piece, it, it does pose issues. If we can't have spectators and we're only permitted to have staff, you know, et cetera, then, then what do you do in that situation? Um, what do you do if it's an open field? Uh, you know, if, if people come and are walking around the exterior of the stadium, you know, we have to be mindful it is our property and we don't want large congregate groups um, because that will have potential negative impact on us as a district, potentially our students. Um, so it does, it puts everybody in a very difficult position. And so our job right now is to try and figure out how we can then live stream events, how we can you know, potentially make sure that our students are able to play, parents can see it, um, because that, that should happen uh, at this point. They're outdoor events. If an outdoor event can hold 250 people, then to Mr. Bard's point, Hershey Park, um, you know, all other places, are they held to those same standards? I think that's a very fair question. Um, we know the answer. But I'm in Costco that's indoors. There was about a thousand people in there. <laughs> let's let's hope the um, letter that some representatives have signed and sent to the governor's office requesting that spectators be allowed in the outdoor events will I mean uh, rattle some cages there. I, mean, I think Mr. Smiley brings up a good question. Um, uh, for those type of events like at a football field or soccer field where there's a fence if people are social distancing and wearing masks, are they really violating what the governor has told us? And if they're not, I would say it should be allowed. I mean, if it can be done uh, in an orderly manner. I, I, you know, let's keep somebody from driving their car and stopping and parking along the road and trying to watch the football game. And they're not really, so I, get, I think we might need to think about what Mr. Smiley talked about there. Anyway, Mr. Babersky, you said you're looking for the board's uh, support or otherwise for the current health plan and uh, not to step out in front of my colleagues. I'd like to say that witnessing the highest ever participation in tryouts for cheerleading, witnessing 
one of the highest levels of participation in optional workouts for football, where parents are signing letters to allow their children to be there, which shows their support for them to be there. My wife and I also own an all-star cheer gym, which we've been operating since we've been allowed to. No cases at any of those venues we've mentioned. And with the league meeting tomorrow to discuss this exact situation, I think that personally, I don't know how we could do anything except accept and support the current plan you provided. And this item is an action item. Um, since this is, can be a voting meeting just for the board members, it's another action item near the end that we will um, have the opportunity to vote on tonight. Yeah. So we don't need any motion correct, correct. at this we'll, point. We'll vote on it later. Yep, right now. Is this going to be an irrevocable decision? <clears throat> if we don't like what we hear from the LL next week, do we vote on it again? Or if they change what we see tonight, the, base, the basis of, of how athletics is going to occur? Well, th this is separate from the LL League. And this, I mean, this is required by the state. To, and the, the LL League vote is, uh, as members of the LL League, uh, we would expect it to, to adhere to what the LL League decides to do tomorrow. But, but this plan is separate from the vote okay. that the LL League is doing Understood. Tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, Dr. Paulins, I'd like to throw out a hypothetical about, and I don't want to guess what tomorrow's vote may or may not be, but let's say that the vote says we're going to delay the season. And let's also say that it's a close vote and that there are a number of districts that are supportive of starting the season according to its normal schedule. Pursuant to the broad flexibility articulated by PIAA, what would stop those districts from playing each other until the commencement of the season according to tomorrow's vote? Well, I mean, we, we currently have a schedule in place. So, I mean, you know, a, a vote to delay is is a vote that's going to have a ripple effect. Um, I mean, we, we schedule athletic events two and three years out. So, I mean, it would be, it would be adjusting of schedules. Uh, but if, 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 let's say all the section one schools decided they were not going to hear, let's say the Lancaster Lebanon League decides we're going to push it back two weeks and the section one schools decide they're not going to hear with that. We would still be within the PIAA rules because we would be start, we wouldn't be violating any PIAA However, we would need to, um, you know, as, as members of the LL League, uh, we would need to decide whether we have an onus to follow their decision making since we are members. And who would make that? Would that be your decision then? No, I, I think I would defer that. Uh, I, I think that would be a serious decision, and, and I would defer that back to the administration or possibly the well, board. You are the administration. So right, I mean, right. But, but I, yeah. think I, I think I would want input on that. Okay. I, I wouldn't want to make that decision just solely on myself. But, but I would say um, that, that I, I would seek board input on that. I'm sorry? I, I would seek input from the board. On what that. would be your recommendation? I mean, would that, I mean is that something yeah. that you would support? Yeah. Um, you're putting me on the spot, Mr. Keener. I know. Uh, Mr. Keener. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I, I think ultimately we're, we need to be, do what's in the best interest of our students okay. in our community. But, but I'm also, uh, I, you know, we've been a member of the Lancaster Lemon League for a long time. So it would be a very difficult decision. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I have um, just a comment first. For this, th thank you for the work you're doing. I have, I do have to say, I have a concern about football and volleyball simply because football is a contact sport and and volleyball, not so much because it's a contact sport, but because they're inside. But given that this is voluntary, it's not like the requirement that parents have to make the choice for their kids and what they think's best. I'm, I'm okay with you know, going, going on with this. I do have a question and it's sort of based on the fact of what's going on in professional sports. Hopefully, you know, the only issue I've heard during the off season thing was the coach at 
Lampeter Strasburg getting COVID and they stopped football practice for two weeks and I haven't heard of anything else, but are we developing plans in the event something would happen that sports would end up getting canceled or, you know, in the event the high school would have to be closed? You know, if you're, if you're closing the high school for some reason because there has been a COVID outbreak, sports, I would imagine, could and follow after school do we have a plan to go on you know because again I'm, I'm thinking more of major league baseball they don't seem to have you know they're going to play their 60 games now they're talking about who has a winning percentage you know I, i've read this things for the piaa they're talking about well maybe it's up to the districts to have playoffs maybe we're not going to have playoffs and it might all be irrelevant but do we have are we working on some contingencies in the event that would happen? In the, in the event that we would have positive COVID? Yeah, cases, not so much uh, sports, you know, because again, I'm hoping that if the kids are coming to school, they're supposed to be in school, you know, unless, and maybe this could be another question. I'm assuming if they're doing the virtual option, if, if we approve that, they can still participate in sports after school. Right. So in that case, I could understand you still have to do the screening because you could have... 10 players that are you know home all day and coming for practice at the end of school but i guess thing is what happens yeah. in the event that we would have to close down the school or something because of this what happens with games being missed what happens with practices let, let me let me just say the piaa has made very clear that if if, if a team is unable to play due to a COVID situation that would be considered a no contest that would not be considered a forfeit. So they, they've made that clear. So there wouldn't be pressure on teams to, to try to circumvent any sort of protocols to avoid a loss. So, but at that point, I'll turn right. it over to you. And so the decision to close schools will be in consultation with the Department of Health. And I do envision if we're advised by the Department of Health to close our schools, then yes, we would need to close athletics at that time for the period of time we are closed. Um, and make sure that everybody has the ability to, to you know, stay at home for the set period of time based on their advice and directions, and then work to resume and building those transition plans back of what that would look like uh, on that end. But we would not just unilaterally close um, all the directions we've been giving from the medical uh, professionals at this point is that we would be in contact directly with the Department of Health to discuss our situation within our district uh, and at the same time, if there's a broader decision that's made at the state level for all the entire state or individual counties, we would need to adhere to that as well. The other question I would have in the event that other school districts wouldn't be as strict as following the plan as, as we seem to be, which also was very encouraging to hear that, you know, from the observation, the coaches and the players are trying their best to keep things going. Um, the question would be, if other school districts aren't doing this to that level and you know we're gonna play another school and they've had COVID cases, but yet they're somehow continuing to allow sports to happen, what's gonna happen in that case? I, I, I don't. I don't know how we would be able to judge what other schools are doing, uh, just just because they're you know, like, like Mr. Bermersky talked about today. How the, the communication of COVID cases is not something that's going to be broad based, correct? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I don't know if I have an answer for you on that question. Any other questions on athletics? Hang in there. I, I can tell you, I'm excited to get the season started. I really am. And, and, and as the students and coaches, and uh, we, we appreciate uh, if, if you vote to approve this, we, we greatly appreciate it. And we will do our best to, to follow this plan exactly as it's supposed to be followed. So, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you.